Hello, I'm the main developer of Partial Control. In this video, I'm going to explain how the development of the game went. If you're not familiar with the game, you should try out the free demo on Steam or look at my video Summary Partial Control Content. So how did it all start? Partial Control is actually a derivative of a game I made with my brother back in my last year of studies. At the time, I was obsessed with simulations, and I still am. Initially, I suggested to my brother, why don't we make a game in which there is a fight simulation and you just have to predict who's going to win the fight. I'm guessing he thought just predicting a winner wasn't enough of a game. So he suggested that the player could maybe modify the environment of where the simulation would take place. At the end we had in mind like a more serious competitive version of totally accurate battle simulator. We went on ahead and made this prototype. You can really consider this the first version ever of partial control. You really can see all the main components of the game, even if it's very different from what it is now. In this version of the game there are just shields, guns and ammo. You can see which character is going to try to kill which character. The simulation was designed to be varied yet somewhat predictable. To make things predictable, we limited the amount of relative variables to the minimum without going all the way, which would have made the simulation turn-based. Here are some of the choices we made to make things predictable. Characters are just killed in one shot. Guns have between 0 and 6 bullets. Shields protect characters from 2 shots. Big structures break in 3 shots. Small structures break in 1 shot. Characters aren't too smart and make very predictable choices. Ok, but in this prototype, how can you play? The only way you can influence the fight is with this yellow marker. You have to place it in a key spot before the fight starts. Then during the fight, at any time, you can press a button to activate a shield wall that appears momentarily where the yellow marker was. The shield can be used to block bullets or prevent a character from getting somewhere. In this version of the game, there is a strategic part in which you have to decide the spot where to place the appearing wall. And then a timing reflex part because after, you have to make sure to make the wall appear at the right moment. This is interesting, but we wanted a more relaxing, pure tactical game, so we didn't want the player to have to deal with anything in real time. The gameplay and plot progressed and after 6 months we had this, which we presented as our final year project. We called the game Ripple from the Ripple Effect. These are a few sequences from the trailer. Be warned, the graphics were really not good. I think something bad is about to happen. Let's get into the game. The game had a lot of interesting stuff, even though we failed a bit, I mean a lot, with the 3D modeling. The plot of this game was about gangsters. You're the house AI and your goal is to save the gangster with the blue shirt during a shooting. The simulation is more or less identical as with the initial prototype, but the gameplay had become more like what we wanted. Initially, the game needed to be for console. This was part of the school assignment's constraints. Our game was actually a strategic game with many options that would have been much better suited as a computer game with a mouse and keyboard. But we actually liked the challenge of attempting to make it work in console. And we came up with a lot of systems to make it work nicely. So let's see what we came up with. First of all, the navigation system. This version of the game, the player navigates the environment by switching between different cameras in the room. He can only rotate the cameras. This simplifies the navigation controls for the player and at the same time made his experience more immersive. It makes sense that the house AI would only have visibility through the house's cameras. Of course, the player has less control on picking his ideal observation spot, but this seemed like a good compromise. Now, how can the player modify the environment? This resembles a lot more what you can see in partial control. The player has energy and he can spend it to make changes in the environment. Just in this version, it's more immersive, but it takes longer to do. For example, the player can change a quantity of bullets in guns like this.
The gangsters in the sci-fi world have cerebral implants, so the player can influence a bit what's going on in their brain. For example, he can change who they will try to kill next during the fight, or have them become paralyzed for a while, just like in partial control. He can also move furniture or activate the hide knife feature that hides the knife so no one will pick it up. Let's see what the simulation looks like. In this version of the game, there is though a big difference with partial control. The player can pause the game and make modifications to the environment at any moment in time. But as time passes, the player loses energy automatically. Let me show you. See how the player's energy goes down slowly? One energy point every two seconds. We made this system because we wanted the player to be involved all through the course of the simulation, but at the same time we still wanted to keep the player predicting instead of just waiting for events to unfold and reacting. With this system, this is the thought process of the player. First, when the simulation is paused, at the beginning the player attempts to predict what will happen during the fight. Then he is confronted with the hard choice, either he makes the changes to the environment now or he lets the simulation run a while and makes his changes later when he will have less energy but will have the advantage of not needing to predict such a long time in the future. Any initial approximate prediction of what might happen in the simulation helps the player make this choice. A good example of a game that resembles ours is Frozen Synapse. It did not exist when we started the development of Ripple, but it's a good example of a more or less popular game similar to ours. The developers had the same dilemma about how to make the player intervene during the simulation. They chose to have the game pause automatically every 5 seconds to give the player a moment to influence the simulation. We considered doing something like this, but we didn't like having such an important event be totally time dependent. Anything time dependent is less intuitive to predict. Our player would have trouble predicting what the situation would be next time he got a chance to influence the environment. In Frozen Synapse, a lot of the issues that the player may have with predicting time dependent events are solved through the fact that the player has the possibility to make mock up pre simulations of what might happen in the future, something that is not possible in our game. In our game, the player just has one shot at predicting the future, and that's why we need the future just the right amount of predictable. The final version of Partial Control had a very neat solution to this issue, which is that the simulation pauses at specific moments when the player's cyborg needs to make decisions. These moments were not obligatory as intuitive as I would have liked, but I made sure to give the player a lot of feedback to help him understand when these moments happen. Eventually, with experience, the player understands exactly when the game will automatically pause. Even though Ripple is a much smaller game than Partial Control, it also has two modes, one in which the player can restart the same level with the same setup multiple times, and another called Parallel Universes, in which the player has to make sure his character survives in at least 6 out of 10 randomly generated setups. The division of the game in these two modes mainly exists because the version of the game with procedural setups is much harder and not so new player friendly. Pasho Control has the same division with the Campaign and the Chaotic Universe mode. I don't think though that it would be impossible to make a procedural version of the game with a more progressive difficulty curve, but I still would want to keep the version of the game with no procedural content, just because some people prefer the trial and error gameplay. Ok, so let's move on. After we finished our studies, me and my brother divided. I continued working on our game and he went to do his own thing. He was totally ok with me taking the game and completely transforming it. And that's exactly what I did. I made the game into a PC game, like it probably should have been from the start. Then I changed the theme into a more of a, an extravagant dark science fiction theme. In the old version, the theme is science fiction, but more like within the details. Guns look like guns, but they have mechanical arms. People look like people, but they have cerebral implants. By contrast, in partial control people look like robots. Everyone can have their brains hacked. Objects are smart. The world of partial control barely resembles the world we know. 
I made this change for many reasons, but the main one was that the old art style of Ripple needed a lot of detail to be properly communicated. The whole idea was going to require a lot more work put into the realism. Those sketchy 3D models we made were not doing the job properly. Initially, the gameplay of partial control was going to be exactly the same as the one of Ripple. I just wanted to change the theme, the plot, and expand the game into a full game. I started by just changing the controls and navigation system so it would be just more adapted to PC. I made the camera be higher with a more strategic view, made humans into cyborgs which look more like just robots, I added many items like missiles and cloning devices, but I still kept a textured and more or less realistic environment. I didn't find it looked too bad, but I wasn't very sensitive to art in video games. Later I joined a special course designed to help me with video game development, and I became a lot more attentive to all the details concerning art. I decided the art of partial control needed to be better, and more adapted to the current standards. Through my course there was an artist that joined me, he created and transformed a few levels with a realistic contemporary style. The assets he made don't belong to me, but I was given his authorization to show them to you. Considering he was alone, it took a long time for him to make these assets. The realistic style was all nice and all, many people liked it, but the testers needed more variation, more assets. To me, the realism style was clearly a path that would lead to a never-ending development. So at the end, I went for a more simplistic style that maybe didn't have a huge aesthetic appeal, but at least had the benefit of improving the readability and gave a nice mythical vibe. Through the course, I also did some experimentation with the gameplay. And that's when I added the automatic mid-level pauses that happen every time the player's character needs to make a choice. These really improved how much fun the players had when trying the game. Now the game had taken its final form. A few months after my course, I released it on Steam. It maybe wasn't the ideal game, I could still see many paths to improve it, but I was satisfied. I still probably have a million things to say about everything I learned through the development of this game, but I think this is a good moment to finish this video. Thanks a lot for watching.